Today I'm just going to do a quick follow up on the tuning fork video. I was quite surprised at the numbers of views that this video has had so far and there have been questions related to the accuracy of the frequency that this tuning fork will produce and so I thought well let's just try and make a, a halfway reasonable measurement. What I had to do was get rid of some of the impulses generated by the switch contacts. Here is the output directly from this contact on the tuning fork and as you can see there's hash everywhere, there's all sorts of impulses. It's a combination of both contacts on the fork and also a bit of back EMF from the energising coil. So as you can see, trying to get a decent measurement of the frequency is not going to be a, a simple matter. So what we need to do is clean this up before we can actually get a counter connected and make a, a halfway reasonable measurement. So this little circuit just takes the tuning fork output contact here and is pulled up to 5 volts through this 220R resistor. Then we've got a 1K resistor here which serves two purposes. One, to limit the current going into these clamping diodes which clamp the signal to the 0 and 5 volt logic levels. Plus the 1K resistor is also part of this RC network. We form a low pass filter and then we, it finally goes into this Schmidt trigger which just takes out some of the noise that is within the range of standard logic levels. So the debouncing circuit that I've just shown will now clean this signal up quite considerably. Can we turn channel 2 on and I'll just re-trigger that on channel two right and as you can see it's quite clean and just for clarity I'll turn channel one off and as you can see it's quite a clean square wave now a little bit of squiggling here and whatever on the tops but basically the the Schmidt trigger takes care of most of the rubbish after the low pass filter and here you can see the output of the fork on a one second time interval and I've deliberately reduced the number of digits displayed and in fact I can increase that a little bit so you can see the remaining digit moving around but we're talking well, this digit here is millihertz, so it's remarkably stable. Considering that it's not in its cabinet, and one of the, well, there are two issues there, just temperature fluctuations and also even any air movement would, would possibly upset the, the readings at, a, at the finest, at the finest resolution. So as you can see, for just a mechanical device, it's producing quite a stable frequency reference at 50 Hertz, albeit a bit under 50 Hertz.